Red Faction, the reclaimed first-person shooter for PlayStation 2, which made a buzz out of itself with its destructive environment and gun gameplay, has taken its step to the next generation with Red Faction Guerrilla, but this time in a third-person perspective. Has Mars yet again fallen under trouble? And if so, is it enough to reinvent the wheel for this franchise? Find out on Sex Place Review. Red Faction Guerrilla takes place in Mars in the year 2120. You'll play as Alec Mason, a minor engineer who arrives on Mars to reunite with his brother Dan. Soon after Mason's arrival, Dan explains the current situation on the planet, explaining that because of the pressure demands on the amount of productivity from Mars resources coming from the Big Earth Corporation has led to the ruling organization on Mars, the Earth Defense Force, namely EDF, to put the Mars society into a state of unfree labor to match the Earth's high demand of resources. As a result of this, Dan asks Mason to join the resistance group Red Faction, which Dan himself is a member of. Soon after this, Dan is gunned down by the EDF, and Mason himself gets rescued by the Gorilla Faction, and as a result, decides to join the resistance in hopes of liberating Mars from the EDF forces. With a very boring and bad introduction, falling with a big lack of personality from characters, makes up for a bad story, and there isn't anything that will really make you even the slightest interested in following it. The story itself is just very weak, and you'll stop paying attention to it within the first hour. He said I was Red Faction. Like it or not, Mason, you are now. Gameplay. Red Faction Guerrilla is set in an open world divided into six distinct areas, and the player must successfully free each area from the EDF control before moving on to the next one. You can traverse through the areas by foot or vehicles, and because of the vast world, you'll have a big freedom of choice of what to do as there are plenty of objectives to choose through through your map. Your main objective is to liberate every area from the EDF's presences by lowering their so-called EDF control in order to progress the main story. As mentioned, you'll have a big choice of missions, but even non-mission objectives such as destroying propaganda posters and small facilities can reduce EDF control, but most of the time you'll be doing various side missions such as rescuing hostages, destroying enemy held facilities, defending locations from attack, and delivering vehicles. From the very start, you'll see that the main point of the game is destruction. Destruction is the key to success in this game. The game features an impressive engine that enables a very vast destructible environment, which allows building, bridges, and nearly every structure available to be totally destroyed. Destroying buildings will leave behind salvage, the game's form of currency which can be used along with salvage rewarded by completing missions to unlock and upgrade weapons and technology at safe houses, which are scattered around the world map. There is a big selection of weapons, ranging from C4 explosives to rocket launchers, but only four can be equipped at the same time. You have the ability to choose and change weapons at each safe house. Because of the destructive terrain feature and big arsenal of weapons, the game gives you a very big freedom in how you want to approach each objective as there are tons of different ways to complete them. It's a very refreshing take from the more linear approaches we have seen these past years. The game also features multiplayer. There are six game modes, including typical multiplayer modes such as Team Deathmatch and Capture the Flag. Other modes focus on attempting to destroy or prevent the destruction of structures. You'll gain experience points, where you can later spend them on different features to your character. You'll travel around the wastelands of Mars through destructive car chases, explosions and gunfights, and there is no denying that the game's destruction and sound is marvelous. Having the ability to destroy nearly everything is an impressive feat, and it never gets worse as you improve your weaponry and tackle on bigger structures as you progress. The combination of how the explosions and collapsing structure is done by the engine is something unique that no other game has done before, and every time it's just a joy to your eye whenever you blow something up. Verdict. 
destruction, destruction, and yet again destruction. That will make up for a good summary of Red Faction Guerrilla. Having an open world game on Mars, with tons of objectives to tackle on, with a big destructive arsenal of weapons, is bound to be fun, and Red Faction gives you that. The game may offer a very bland story that you won't really care about, but if you can look past it, you'll have a tons of fun roaming the world and doing whatever pleases you the most. So, if you have been in search for an open world game that offers something new, combined with hours of fun with a big selection of objectives and destructive environment, Red Faction Guerrilla is the game that will give you just that.